and this is way too complicated but there's of course an eighth inch hole going all the way through there and it's curved and it's flattened on the back side like I just showed you then I, I put an eighth inch uh, tube in there because the inlet this will be the inlet this end will be plugged probably just with a little piece of uh, eighth inch rod and uh, uh, Loctite, but that'll be done after the soldering is done because I can't do that with the soldering But the whole idea here is this is going to lay on here like this Around the pivot point and I even file a little extra material out to accommodate that spring And when I locate it just the way I want it I'm going to clean this up and solder it the same as I've showed you uh, how I solder other things it's going to be just like that. Then I will take it, take the cylinder off, and drill those top two little holes into this. And that's that's the manifold. Did that make any sense to you at all? I know there's got to be easier ways, but that's the way I'm going to do it on this. And I, that's really going to throw you beginners off. I, I know it is. I'm going to go ahead and solder that now off camera because it's a little bit awkward to do. Here's the setup for soldering and if this is a failure I can take it back off but you can just barely see maybe you can't see it all you can barely see the exhaust ports here because I don't want to cover those up. So I'm going to go ahead and sweat solder that on. I already got some paste on there and got my little torch ready and uh, see how that works out and then we got to do some more drilling and plugging yes I would say do not attempt this at home but there it is soldered and uh, one of the little exhaust ports did solder shut so I had to uh, run the 3 drill through that this one and this one do connect with the manifold so I double checked that I have Loctite here this is just a piece of eighth inch tubing that's pretty small inlet but that's what it's going to get and here I cut off a brass rivet and uh, it's real short and stubby and that will be Loctite in place to plug that in I'm going to dress this up just a little bit we got some discoloration from the heat but that's the nature of soldering but uh, this thing is not too far from running, but I do not recommend that you try this unless you're an ex experienced and avid uh, model builder and you do all kinds of things. But if you're a first timer, you're going to need to use that method where I told you just uh, some short stubby pieces of copper or um, brass sticking out like that and connected with the T. It'll work just the same. I'm going to put it back together. It's fully assembled and I hope ready to run and I've uh, pumped up the compressor and uh, in keeping with my premise of uh, that they always run the first time this is the inaugural run and I've got it set for five pounds. So let's plug that in. Now that's only eighth inch inlet and that's my smallest vinyl tubing. All right, on with the air right now. I didn't even have to spin it. That was, that was like that. They always run. Always run. Remember, this was double acting. And that is about three pounds of pressure right there. I don't like them to run full blast where they hop all over the place. Now, I did indeed... take a little bit off the flywheel so that when I mount it on the board, which is the next step, I do not have to have a well for, for the flywheel. See, that's in a well. I like the looks of that, but it's just one more step. So there's clearance under there for it. Remember now that the uh, exhaust is right there and there, and I can feel it coming out. I do not like the looks of that manifold as well as I thought. 
I thought that'd be pretty neat and not quite so cloddy looking as, as this one. If the engine is built on thicker stock instead of sheet metal, this is nothing more than sheet metal, we don't run into all of that problem because there's room to drill all kinds of holes for the ports. Now I'm trying to think if there's any steel in here. Everything is brass. I'm even going to use brass screws here to mount it to the little walnut base here presently. Maybe tomorrow. Everything brass except for the spring is steel. And, you know they do make uh, bronze or brass springs. I don't have any that I know of. The flywheel of course is lead. And the piston is aluminum. Good running engine, isn't it? It'll look even better on the base, which I'm going to start here presently. Matter of fact, while the Loctite was setting up, I did cut the walnut to size, so that won't take too long before I do that. So, what do you think? I don't know how many hours, but I think we're probably at six or eight hours, but that includes all the filming and, and the setup, which takes a lot of extra time. A lot. I already made the, the little walnut base. My gosh, it just just got spattered with oil when I started that up. <laughs> but I took the time. This is about three eighths thick. And why did I use walnut? Because I got a ton of a ton of it probably a hundred board feet in this thickness. You usually don't find this thickness, but it's just perfect. So I, I just cut it up, sanded it a little bit, put a bevel chamfer on all four corners, and uh, it'll be mounted here in a, in a little while. And why do I use walnut? I started to say because I got tons of it, because I like the looks of it, and I love the smell of it when I work with it. The same as I love the smell of cutting oil in the morning. So what I do for a finish, I just put some vegetable oil on there. And canola is what I found in the larder. And it dries fast. See how that changes the, the color? Of course, it's not going to be shiny like that. It's going to, it's going to get dull. But it really brings out the, uh, the grain. Now, you guys in other countries, I don't know if you use walnut, but this is black walnut, and it used to be a, considered a fine uh, furniture wood, semi-hard. It's a hard wood, but it's not all that hard. It used to make gun stocks out of it. Now they make it out of plastic. See how nice that looks? I'll probably even do the bottom to look at the difference. Now, of course, in America and around the world, we use particle board. And we put a vinyl finish on it and pretend that it's walnut or some other fine wood. Yes, that's right, we pretend. Well, there it is, the finished golden boy. And, uh, been kind of a long video, but you know it's only half over. Because now I start building version two of the Golden Boy and it will be a two cylinder. And I, in the earlier part of the video, I mentioned that there might even be three, but the video is getting so long that this will be just a, a, a two engine video. And how will the uh, Golden Boy 2 uh, appear? And what's different about it? Well, there are some things different and some things that are the same, so it won't be as long a build because I'm not going to repeat myself on things such as the cylinder uh, because I've already built the cylinder, but i got two more to build. But what I will do on that one, it's going to be, uh, first of all, three pieces of brass. I mentioned this earlier. There's the bottom and two sides, and those will be soldered together. And there will be two cylinders one on each side. 
So you got one here and you got one here. And the flywheel will be in the middle. There'll be some other changes. I'm going to try to come up with a better manifold system because now I have to distribute the the air or the oil, the oil or the the air or the steam into four different places. So that complicates it even more. But uh, in uh, some ways it'll be uh, similar, in some ways quite different. So keep watching now as I continue with uh, another hour or two of video on Golden Boy, Yellow Boy. Make that Yellow Boy, Yellow Boy Two. Hope you've enjoyed it so far. And stick with me. Good morning, and I've had three cups of coffee, and uh, today is about uh, six or seven days since I started uh, Yellow Boy 1, and today I'm embarking on Yellow Boy 2, and uh, I don't know if that's a double entendre or not, but uh, it's uh, the second uh, Yellow Boy engine, and it has two cylinders. Does that make it a double entendre? I don't know. But uh, let's get started on this while I'm still coffeeed up and, and wired up. And uh, you remember this is uh, it was number one, and so, you know sometimes I've been calling this Golden Boy, or but I, I really mean Yellow Boy. That's what I what I want to call it. Reminds me of a gun that I used to have. Okay, Th this engine is going to be very very similar to, to to this one, except that it's going to be two cylinder, and this will be the configuration: the flywheel in the middle, and one cylinder on each side. No drawings unless Tolly provides them here at the end. But the cylinders will be exactly the same. There'll be the same flywheel and the same cranks and, and, and many different things. So uh, I, I know I said this before, but uh, I, this will be a short video compared to the first one. But it will be a brass frame as well. And it's going to look like. this. Soldered up. Can you see that? I've already done the layout. I'm not going to do that on camera. But can you see how similar that looks to the other one? Let me give you some of the dimensions now. Let's talk dimensions. Again, that's 45 thousandths uh, thick brass. You know, it would be awesome if this was made out of thicker brass, like eighth inch brass or even three sixteenths. That'd be pretty neat. But I don't have any. But maybe you do, because you're not necessarily going to have this thickness. And you've got to work with what you have or what you can get. As you can see, it's four inches long, and it's uh, one and a half inches wide. And I already laid the radius out here for the top and that's a three-quarter radius. These holes of course are going to be half inch so that's a quarter inch radius and the reason for laying uh, the circle out is because uh, I want to see where the tangents are. Remember I want a radius right here and here so that's what that's all about. But uh, now this will be the hole for the main shaft or the the bearing and that I believe is it's on the center line and it's uh, three-eighths from the top but actually we should measure from the bottom so it's an inch and an eighth from the bottom now this other hole here is uh, actually going to be for stays there's going to be three stays now the stays are just supports to hold this thing together because remember soft soldering is a relatively weak joint so this is a stay, uh, there will be 8th inch holes, this is a stay, and this is a stay. So those three will be 8th inch holes, and uh, I, it's just arbitrary where they're located. This will only be a temporary one, that will have to be removed, but it, it's going to be used during the soldering process. The other two will be temporary, and then later on I'll solder permanent ones in there, and uh, that to be announced uh, later. This line here is uh, 
5 eighths from the bottom. And this is the pivot point now for the cylinder. And it is 3 eighths from the top. It's centered here. And 1 and 3 eighths is the length of, of that part right there. Let's see, I know I'm a little tentative here in what I'm telling you. And uh, the stay here is 3 eighths from the bottom. This one is 3 quarters from the bottom. And this one also, well, it's uh, about 5 eighths, maybe a little bit over. And it's also on the center line of this. But I had to make sure that this didn't interfere with the pivot later on. So that completes that layout. Now, I'm only going to lay this out on one piece. I'm going to attempt to drill them and grind them and all of that as one piece. Can you see the layout now? That way I only have one layout and I know all the holes will match one another. Now, I could temporarily solder them, but I'm going to use a uh, well, we're going to get double duty out of these holes. This hole here and this hole here are going to hold tiny little screws that will hold this together while I do all the drilling and sawing and sanding. I think that'll work out quite well. Let me say that these two pieces are exactly the same size. Now, how did I do that? Well, I milled them. These are milled surfaces so that they're exactly the same height and, and length. That's going to make it a little easier to work on. I milled them together, you see, as a pair. So you can do that if you want or sand them, whatever machinery you got. Now, this is the bottom. I made this bottom a little bit wider than this, as you can see. Why did I? Because if, if it isn't a little wider, it's really a tough to work in here because uh, there's just limited room and those two threaded parts and the springs and everything interfere with, with one another, plus the manifold is going to go in there, so I needed some working room. Furthermore, when I lay this up, Rather than, well, I haven't decided for sure whether that's going to fit up like that or set on the top. But anyway, it will be wider. How wide? One and a half inches. Now, what is this all about? That is the well for the flywheel. Because I believe that uh, the flywheel is going to come down a little farther, unless I turn the flywheel down to a smaller diameter. I also may have to make a relief or an inlet into the wooden base a little bit, but I'm going to saw this out or mill this out so that uh, that is done. In case I need it, it would be most difficult to do it after the whole thing is soldered up. So I want to do that now because this bearing will be in the way also. So there's several things that I got to do here. I'm trying to think ahead, but you know, it, it's kind of hard to think ahead and uh, if you haven't done one of these before. This is a, a prototype, I guess you'd say. At least for the frame. The rest of it I've got mastered now because I've done one. I've held the two pieces together with a couple of vice grips and I, I laid that uh, right on the surface plate so that the bottoms uh, are even and, uh, and up against my one, two, three block, so this end is even, so I know that's... I hope this doesn't nick it up too bad, but I wasn't in the mood for any nonsense with pads under there, but, uh, you know, vice grips can be kind of dangerous. Now, I will drill those two holes, those two holes, let's see, these two holes. You know what, I'm going to drill this one while I'm at it, so three holes, but I may not need the third one. And they're going to be drilled number 38 and tapped 540. I'll do that off camera. And I'm going through both pieces. 
Then I can take the vice grips off because this is quite awkward. There it is with uh, three screws, 540 screws. Now I can take the vice grips off. Boy, look at that vice grips. That came from a garage sale, but I guess it was still worth 50 cents. But boy, that thing is mutilated. If people use them for welding, they just get in a terrible condition, don't they? Well, uh, these are little cap screws here, and there's a nut and a washer under there. And the only reason for that was to space it out so they didn't stick out on the back side because remember I'm going to do more drilling and sawing and, and I wanted it to, to set uh, relatively flat and I still got a little bit sticking out here and uh, some burrs. Yeah, the, I guess they're burrs so I'll take the burrs off and it'll set kind of flat. Now I am ready to drill some other holes here so this will be an eighth inch hole you know, I don't just mark this for your sake, but I often do that for my own sake, so I don't miss drill. And you need to do that too, it's a good idea. And then these can just be pilot drilled, and then they're going to be drilled with the step drill, the Christmas tree bit uh, that I talked too much about, remember that? And then this will be 730 seconds. And remember, I punched that on the other one, but I don't know if I can punch the double thickness. Plus, this will be in the way, but we'll see here in a second which works. I'll probably try to put the punch on some scrap stock, a double layer of that, and see if it works. Although, there's no reason why I can't drill that now in the, uh, the double thickness. Probably won't tend to grab quite as much. Then, after that is done, then I'm ready to saw. I did indeed attempt to punch the 732nd hole uh, in a uh, double piece of scrap waste material. I did not like one bit the way it distorted it. It took considerable pressure to do that from my weak 71 year old hands. So I didn't like that so I did uh, go ahead and drill it and uh, make sure you hold this in a vise. And you always get, a, well, <laughs> Looks like a punch with a dull punch. I've got to remove that burr, so that's done. And remember, that will fit the 730 seconds Hobby Lobby brass tubing, and that's the main bearing. Now I will use the Christmas tree bit here, do these two holes. I've already put uh, a 16 inch, uh, 1 16th inch pilot hole. Do this slow and deliberately with great thought given to every hole and every cut so you don't have to redo it. The drilling is all completed. The only thing I don't like so far is that the material separated there when I used the Christmas tree bit and we got burrs between them but I don't think that's going to hurt anything but I still don't like it. Alright over to the bandsaw I'm going to rough cut it and prepare it for uh, sanding. You know, there isn't a whole lot to saw out when you think about it, just these corners here and, and this little piece here. Alright, let me go do that. I guess I didn't mention it, but uh, these holes serve a double purpose, the big holes. One is to give me the radius that I desire, and the other is that it uh, allows me to turn my blade and as you know, if you've done much cutting, you'd have to provide some kind of relief hole to do that anyway, because you cannot turn on a dime. Well, I guess you can. A dime is just about the right size to allow you to make the turn and then finish the cut. So I just got a little bit more to go there, and then I'm ready to start the sanding. <laughs> 